today on the bench we have a kind of a rare radio, especially in this country, in the United States, a Midland 7001 model radio, and this is the export. So this is not the FCC certified radio, you know, 40 channel that would have just had a two digit display like you would uh, be more familiar with seeing here in this country. This was an export radio, so it's a very early export radio. Um, you can't call it a black box radio. It's it's a blue box radio, I guess you could say, because the covers <laughs> are blue, kind of the battleship bluish gray color. But uh, so yeah, it's a blue box radio, <laughs> but it's a Midland. Um, so it uses a Cybernet chassis. Um, these were actually very good radios. They're popular. Uh, the main reason people like these is. They call this a 400 channel radio. Now, for starters, that's that's just a, a false statement. It's not really a 400 channel radio. I guess it depends on how you look at it. It's not a CB, so uh, you know it's not a legal CB. So yeah, maybe you could call it 400 channels. The reason that is. There's only 200 positions, so this is a four-band radio, so it has, and this, and this video is on a mystery board in here. I want to clear up what this is. I looked online. There's absolutely no information other than a few people have posted over the years asking what the board is, and yeah, it's just kind of crickets. <laughs> That's about all you hear, you know, dead silence. Um, but this radio has four bands. Now, it's not 40 uh, channels or 40 positions per band. It's actually 50. So there, this this channel selector switch actually has 50 positions. Um, so that gives you a total of 200 channels. 50 times 4, that's 200, at least the, in my math. The way they, or the reason they call this a 400 channel radio is, is because it also has this switch right here. So this switch allows you to either add... And you'll see there's a little LED over here. It says F shift, and that's for frequency shift. So when you put the switch up, you know, or down in this case, the radio is upside down. <laughs> but when you put it into this position in the red, that adds 5,000 hertz to whatever is on the channel display here. And this is not a frequency counter. Be real clear, there is no frequency counter module in here. This display is being driven directly off of this channel selector switch. So the channel selector switch goes to a bunch of dropping resistors that feed this display. And it does have a missing segment. Um, it actually had a couple segments that were kind of wonky. Uh, took the faceplate of the radio off, and there were some bad pass-throughs, because this used it's a, and it's a, that's the problem. I can't fix it. Um, or I got the, the, some of the segments back, but I cannot fix this last one, because this does not use... Uh, multiple individual little modules, little seven segment display modules. It's all one piece. It was a custom, uh, you know, five digit display. And you might be able to even find a, a five digit display, but you'll never get one to work in here because it was really special and it's only about that thick. It is really, really thin. Most LED, you know, seven segment displays, they're like that thick. This thing is like half, probably even less. It's probably more like a third the thickness of a standard seven segment style display. So, yeah, so you're kind of left with, and it was, the way they have that, it's, it's on its own little board, the way it's manufactured, and then they have that stuck onto another board with wires, and then they have some pass-through pins, and yeah, there were a few bad solder connections on those, those interconnects, because the one board just lays on top of the other one, and I was able to get some of those other segments back, but yeah, one's out, so in any case. And then when you flip the switch in the down position, light changes to a different color, because it's a multicolored light. When you flip it in the down position, that subtracts 5 kilohertz from whatever's showing on this display. So... The, the mystery board in this is a little trimmer board. So this is also a, a you know, multi-mode radio. It's not just multi-band. It's up AM, upper, lower side band, and FM. But the mystery board <laughs> that I'm talking about, and you may see it here, is this little critter right here. And I don't think I've ever actually worked on with The more I looked at this and the more I tinkered, because actually the customer sent two of these radios. I've got more than one of these here to, <laughs> to work on for them. 
Um, you know, rare to have to see one of these, but yeah, it's even rarer to see two at the same time. I have a couple of them, but I didn't have any reference on this. I had to look online. I couldn't find anything, so I just I had to figure it out, of course. Uh, but there's no schematic. That's the the one thing that sucks. There's no service manual for this radio. The U.S. version, yeah, there's service manuals. Heck, heck, the I think that's actually in the Sam's manual, the 40 channel FCC version. But this export version, there's no service manual. Um, so you just kind of have to wing it, and th this is a cyber, like I say, it's a Cybernet chassis. Um, the, the board number in this is, uh, what is this? This one's the PTBM 125 A4X, I think it is, or AOX, A4X, I think. Um, and you can find service literature for that board. So as far as doing the alignment on the majority of the radio, you're fine. Now, it came in a few different configurations. There were different board models, because there was the PTBM-131, there was the 125, like this one. There's lots of them that are similar, but they had a different amount of crystals. So this is a four-band. Now, you can't see them, but it's underneath of this little Roger Beep board right here. There's actually four crystals under here. And then, of course, they each have their associated trimmer resistor for uh, frequency alignment on those four crystals. But... You know, so I need to do a train. You know, I've recapped the radio, removed the, the corrosive glue and whatnot, and you know, trying to finish this radio up and the other one. But I need to do an alignment, and yeah, I've got what uh, three, four, six, seven, eight. There's eight, yeah, because there's eight trimmer resistors on this board. I've never seen that board in anything else, and like I say, I obviously have never worked on any of my own <laughs> because I don't ever remember touching that little board. Uh, so, yeah, I've never restored any of my own radios either, the ones of these that I have. <laughs> so I had to figure out what the heck this thing was. Luckily, I did have the, the front of this radio apart to get into the channel, or, you know, the frequency display. Because, um, yeah, the wires on that come off of this thing, they're rather tight. You can just take that screw out. You can lift the board up and rotate it up. That's about it. You can't get it out. and trying to trace where in the heck these wires go. So... I was able to take the mode, move the radio back a hair, the uh, mode and or mode and band selector switches out. You know, just took the nuts off of them, pull them out, and that allowed me to get the board up and out a little bit more to see exactly where in the heck do all these wires go to to try and figure out what the heck does this board do. So, this radio, unlike I think any of the other radios of this style, has that plus or minus 5kc switch, something other radios don't have. And that's kind of when the light bulb... I kind of knew it had something to do with the bands, because there's voltage on this wire, and this black wire over here is to ground. So all four of these trimmer resistors have a ground potential on them, and all four of these trimmer resistors have a voltage source potential on them. And it was just... But what the heck do they do? <laughs> so, once I got everything out here and was able to trace out, they go to, as I suspected, to the band selector switch. But what are they doing? Well, what they're doing is, is they're doing some trickery with the Veractor diode circuit. So, the same thing that, like, when you, uh, your transmit, and that's actually another thing. This radio has no... Uh, most radios you'd be familiar with, and you do an alignment, there's usually a transmit, because you, know, you have a clarifier that's only used on receive. And then you'll have a transmit frequency adjustment on the inside, which is usually a, a, a trimmer resistor. This radio doesn't have that. You just uh, you align the frequencies with the you know, all of your crystal oscillators. You get all your crystal oscillators aligned, and there's your transmit frequency. The clarifier then can shift that frequency, but to get that plus or minus 5 kilohertz, they're doing some trickery with either grounding or adding voltage to either side of the Veractor diode. And they're doing it kind of in a balance, because actually that's how these radios and actually most of them work. Now the closest probably schematic I can get for this that's kind of similar and has, you know, the clarifier is kind of wired the same. The schematics that I have for the 125 style chassis have a dual clarifier, which this does not have. It does not have a fine and a coarse. This has a single, you know, control, only a single knob. It's not a double knob. 
So I'm actually going to be showing this schematic for, it's actually right there, the PTBM 131A4X. And now that rate, that chassis, at least for this schematic, has five crystals. So there's one, two, three, four, five, because that was a five band radio. Uh, but here's your Varactor diode right here. And you can see there's a line attached to each side. And that's what they're doing. There's, and the, 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 <laughs> the clarifier in it, yeah, this is just, this is a head scratcher because, like I say, there's no schematic for this radio. So trying to trace this thing out and figure out how in the heck does this, this Varactor diode tuning circuit work. But, yeah, so here's actually part of the, holds some of the potential for on, on the receive, but it's, but it's a balance. You change the voltage on either side, you can shift the capacitance. Because remember, that's what a Varactor diode does. That's why a Varactor diode schematic symbol looks like a diode and a capacitor in series, because that's what it is. You reverse bias that diode, and depending how much voltage you apply to it, it actually changes the capacitance of the diode. All diodes have that effect. They have a capacitance. But Varactor diodes take, you know... Uh, take use, great use of that effect that, a di that diodes have, and it's actually used to make it a variable capacitor. And then, of course, those that capacitance then is attached, as you can see, you come up, it's just attached in through the trimmer capacitor, uh, trimmer capacitors here, and a uh, parallel capacitor that's attached directly to the crystal. So, but that's that allows it to shift the frequency by changing the voltage on this diode, you change the capacitance, which then also changes the frequency of that crystal. It's the same as turning, like, like here's a parallel ceramic disc capacitor, and then here's the trimmer capacitor that's used for the alignment. That would be just like sticking your screwdriver down in there and turning that variable trimmer capacitor. When you change the voltage here, that's, it, you're basically, it's the same thing. It's just like changing a, you know, a, a trimmer cap right there. So that's what they're doing, and that's what all eight of these little guys down here do. Um, now, in most radios that have the single clarifier, they have a transmit alignment point, like, like I was saying, like most other radios would have. You'd have your clarifier, and then you would have a transmit frequency adjustment right here. That's internal to the radio. That's not external. Um, so what they did was, basically, is it doesn't have this. It has eight of them, but they're wired in different places, and where they're wired in different places is... One of them is four of these, depending on what mode this radio is in, it applies and between the mode switch, and those also are attached down here to the 5KC switch down here. So when you flip that 5KC switch up or down to either add or take away 5 kilohertz, the mode selector switch then either selects one of these four or one of these four trimmer resistors. And it, it applies, it'll add additional ground to this Varactor diode on one side or additional voltage to it, depending if you're either trying to increase the frequency by 5 kilohertz or reduce it. So, that's what the board does. So, everybody wants to know, well, what, Mike, how in the heck do you align it then? So, here is, so here's actually the frequencies for this radio. Uh, it covers from... 26, well actually not 005, because if you were to actually you know, flip that switch, do minus 5K. So it'll, it'll cover from 26.0 to 28 megahertz. Same thing here, 27995. If you flip the switch, add 5 kilohertz, that'll give you 28 megahertz. So it covers continuous, continuously from 26 to 28 megahertz. Um, here's the actual crystals that are used in this radio. Of course, it uses a standard 10240 reference oscillator. These four crystals right here are the ones that are used for the four different bands. And then here's uh, your other crystal used for uh, your sideband offsets. So when you're doing your adjustments in here, there's two trimmers to adjust for either uh, 10.692 or 10.695. Um, but here is the mystery little board. So if you pull this board up, there's actually a part number. That's the nice thing about Cybernets. They always have part numbers on all of their boards. This is the part number on that board. It's PTZZ. 081 AOX. And the way you would do it is basically align the radio. So, you know, find a service manual for any radio that uses this style, you know, chassis radio, basically. Okay. 
just do a normal alignment. Don't pay any attention to this board. As long as you leave the, the 5KC switch in the center position, don't do anything with it. You can complete your transceiver alignment. Transmit, receive, the whole nine yards. All your frequency adjustments. When you're done with the radio, you can come back and then do this. What you want to do is, now I'm using a spectrum analyzer. It's just faster and easier. It's easy um, to use, but you just use a frequency counter. But what you would need to do is, the, the easiest way I found is, is I just use, I am have the spectrum analyzer attached to a sample port off of the antenna jack. So I set the spectrum analyzer up for the center frequency. So in this case, the radio is on, you know, 27695. I think that's, yeah, that's what I had. I just had to check my <laughs> spectrum analyzer over there and see. But I'll just try and get this where I can show me actually getting down in here into the radio. Yeah, you can see that good enough. So if I key the radio, you can see there's the center frequency. If I flip the switch to there's 5kc down. Now I have the span actually set, I normally have it set to 10 kilohertz, you know, or one channel spacing. I actually have it set to 12 kilohertz because if I set it to 10 kilohertz, well when you flip 5kc that's going to put it right off of the screen. So I just add, basically added a kilohertz on either end. But So there's our minus 5k and there's plus 5k or 5000 hertz and center frequency. So what, what I do is I just set my center frequency to whatever the channel I have the radio on in whatever mode I'm in. So I'm going to have four center channels depending if I'm in, you know, band A, B, C, or D. Um, then just key the radio, center the, center the display, and then I can come in here. Oh, let's see. Let's just put it in. So I have it in the, the 5K down position, and, and I just have my marker enabled continuous uh, continuous peak, so that peak tracks, and it's just slightly out of view, isn't it? So, it's actually tracking that peak, you see a little dot there, and then the frequency display right there is actually showing the marker frequency. And that's all I have to do then. I go to center, center frequency, f flip into plus 5k, and then using the little chart here, just by trial and error, it was just a matter of flip to every band or every uh, yeah bank of channels to every band, and then flip the switch to either you know minus plus or minus five k, and just start trying turning trimmer resistors until I figured out what each eight of those did. So this is this is what it is. So if you want to pause the video. So here's the front of the board at the front of the radio. Move my thumb so I'm not blocking the letter there. So as you can see, what I have is D minus and you like D plus. So when you're in band D, this trimmer resistor right here is used to adjust the plus 5K. This one down here, when you're in band D, this one would be used to adjust the minus 5K in band D. And then likewise for all the rest of them. So you know, A, this is the one used to adjust the minus 5K when you're in band A, and this one's the one used to adjust the plus 5K when you're in band A. So, uh, we're in, what, band D, so let's do 10B plus, that's this one, and you'll see, if you watch the spectrum analyzer over there, as I turn this, you can see the frequency changing. Now, like I say, having the marker there, then that allows me to just turn this, Uh, actually, no, I want eight. Yeah, that's good enough for the moment. I'm trying to do this on camera. <laughs> trimmer resist I hate trimmer resistors for frequency adjustments because it's so coarse. It takes a while. But yeah, so if you ever do an alignment on one of these, that's what that board's for. If you've ever wondered if you own one of these and you've wondered what in the heck is that board with all those trimmer resistors, that's what it's used for. It's used to calibrate the four bands of the radio when they're in either plus or minus 5k. So I just wanted to make a quick video to show that because like I say, 
I looked, tried to find find online, find out what it was, you know, to save me from having to do what I did, t- basically tear the radio apart to figure out what the heck that board was, and what what did I need to do? Because you know, I'm doing, an, I'm going to be doing a transceiver alignment to the radio, and I can't just have eight trimmer resistors that are obviously there for a reason and not not align them. So I had to figure out what the heck they were. But uh, there you go. So hard work's done. So now, like I say, you don't have to use a spectrum analyzer. You could use a frequency counter. Um, you also wouldn't even really have to sample it at the uh, the port right there because what you're doing is is changing the frequency of this crystal. So actually, you could go to TP1. I guess it would be TP1 or 4. Where is 4? No, it would be 1. Yeah, TP1. Well, the, and that's another thing. The some of the markings, and like I say, this, this schematic's not exactly for this radio. Some things are labeled differently in here. But yeah, the, 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 you could just uh, attach your frequency counter to the test point in there um, that you would normally use when you're aligning those four crystals. So, same test point, just once you get done doing that alignment, like I said, I just found, I just completed the entire alignment and then came back and did this. But yeah, like I said, you could also just use the... Uh, Hook, leave your frequency counter attached right there. Same procedure, you know. Go to the different bands, flip the flip it into either plus or minus, and you're just going to be adjusting for that frequency offset. You want to shift the frequency of those those crystals right there. So you know, I've got a spectrum analyzer with a sample port attached to it. So if the spectrum analyzer is very handy because it's 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 easy to do a visual alignment because you can actually see the peak moving back and forth across the screen. It's not just a bunch of digital numbers, like trying to, you know, read this, the numbers jumping around. You can actually track your peak and know exactly where it's at. But there you go. So if anybody ever has one of these and you know, or you're having problems with the, the bands you know, or with the band switch and this five plus minus five KC switch, that's how this circuit works. Uh, if you've lost voltage to this board or you've lost the ground to it, um, or if you have a problem with this band selector switch, that's also going to affect the operation of the plus minus 5 KC switch. Because, like I say, that's applying either a ground, a ground potential or a voltage potential to this varactor diode. So anything goes wrong in between here and here and the, the associated wiring that goes over those crystals, because that's actually where the wires go. They come from this board to the... Uh, uh, did they go over? I'm trying to think here now. How in the heck do they have them wired up? Now they actually go from the board to the selector switch, and then from the selector switch, they go down to a, a wire tie post right behind each four of those crystals. But yeah, so any problem anywhere in, in you know the board, this switch, this this switch is going to cause you problems with the the plus minus five KC circuit because you're you're changing the voltage. So, there you go. I hope that helps. Um, you know, mystery board solved. It's it's no longer a mystery. It is the calibration board for the 5K plus and minus adjustments. So, that's all it is. So, I hope that helps.